let's get into it. Alright, we're gonna talk about this. Now so I talk I made some predictions before, right? About um basically the future of black people in America. And let's let's stop that right there. I wanna I wanna bring this up because I'm gonna have a picture of it. I said, black people not going to make it out of America. You're not going to grow old in America. It's no coincidence that these three, the first three people to get killed, three soldiers to get killed in a direct strike uh, in the Gaza conflict is black people descendants of slaves in America, right? That's what it looks like to me. Like, there's no coincidence. So, um, you will bear the brunt, right? And, and there's a reason why, you see. Like, one thing you notice, you never see black people in America they get they never get killed for like fighting for their people right like if you look at for instance you can you can call you know different groups you know take your pick they they get killed in the middle east like different places they get killed fighting for their people right you never see in the modern era right maybe during the civil rights movement you had the Black Panthers, you had Malcolm X, you had Martin Luther King. After that, you never really see black, you never see, for the most part, I say, you can just generally say never see black people, the descendants of slaves in America, getting killed for their people, right? And they claim that they're struggling. But you will see them get killed like this, right as a cop or as a military and stuff like that and they say well this is honorable death right now mind you my family been fighting for the military in America since World War One my grandfather my great great grandfather and my grandfather all of them they've been in wars in the United States right since World War One and when they, long story short, when they came back from them wars, they threatened to lynch them, and they lived under apartheid and Jim Crow in America, right? But they, if they would have got killed, I don't understand where the honor would have been, right? You was basically being forced to fight for a Nazi, one Nazi group against another Nazi group, right? And if they would have died in World War One, World War Two, or Vietnam, right? Or Iraq, I have family members fighting in Iraq, right? Stuff like that. If they would have died, where would it, I'm just saying, where would the honor would have been? Particularly during the time they was living under Jim Crow, and you still living under Jim Crow, right? Where where would the honor have? Where where is the honor in that, right? Where, like, let's just get, I mean, let, let's just get right to the meat of the matter, right? So I don't waste your time. But, so being basically forced to fight for people who don't like you, don't care about you, right? So, it's remarkable the resilience of black people to support a Nazi regime that have been throwing them overboard for the past 400 years, right? And they only use them as cannon fodder, right? If you don't know what cannon fodder is, go look it up, right? They only use them as cannon fodder, right? And you had to ask yourself, 
a dishonorable thing. Right? Like, I saw... I saw a bunch of Negroes, they, they was on this dating podcast, and one of the dudes, he was in the service, they said, thank you for your service. And I was thinking to myself, thank you for what, motherfucker? Thank you for your service. Thank you for what? The service to do what? If you say, you, you know, I'm thanking you for your service, right? Your service to do what? Like if you if you told my grand one of my grandfathers who fought the Nazis and then came back to America to live under Jim Crow, if you told him thank you for your service and he living under Jim Crow, my question would have been your service for what? What kind of fucking response is that? What do you mean thank you for your service? I live under apartheid. I live under Jim Crow. What are you thanking? What are you thanking me for? Your service to a bunch of Nazis to put black people in the Jim Crow? Oh, you're welcome. You mean that's I mean is that you mean that's what you mean? I don't understand. It's not making it doesn't make sense. Every problem can't be solved with logic. This is not a problem for black people in America that's gonna be solved with logic. It's gonna be solved in in the eyes of the Negro in America, it's gonna be in in in, in uh, the Nazi in America and in, in the West, it's gonna be solved in a supernatural way even though it's not supernatural it's just karma it's just it's just um a natural evolution of things right that where things unfold the way they should but because you so wicked and you lie to yourself so much it'll seem surprising and supernatural but to the enlightened it's quite natural unfolding of things right so, so they said, thank you for your service. And I said, something is wrong with black people in America. You've been destroyed in America. Now you've been destroyed by America everywhere in any way they want. See, they're just tools. These people, they were just some tools for the Americans, right? And they got them killed, right? They got them killed. They used them as bait for a bunch of um, angry Arabs. They just they just used them as bait, that, that's all. And he said, well, thank you for your service. You know? And, and it, to who, black people? It doesn't, even any way you chop this shit up, it don't make sense, right? I mean, any way you chop it up, it doesn't really make sense. So, when you say thank you for your service, to who? Thank you to your service to a bunch of Nazis who had no respect for you. I mean, let's break this down. I mean, I'm going to hit it from a few different angles because I know the Negro is a hard head, like the Bible said, the Negro is a hard head, stiff necked people. That's going to be destroyed in America. I told you. You're welcome. I told you so. This is just the beginning. The Negro will not make it, for the most part, out of America. Just like the Bible said, two-thirds shall die and be cut off of my people. It also says judgment starts at the house of the Lord. You you have to understand what those things mean. They're prophecies. You see, they're very prophetic. So, the the the, the Negro in America is not gonna make it, right? Because he can't he can't understand history, because they destroy his history. He can't understand the future because he doesn't believe in prophecy. The Negro in America doesn't believe in the future. He only believes in like make America great again in the future or something like that. He believes in, in uh, wives tales and foolishness and Nazi propaganda, right? White supremacist propaganda. 
he doesn't believe in the in the future in the sense of like remote viewing or you know innate a human's innate psychic ability or prophecies that men had you know righteous men in the wrote down in the Bible or the Hopi Indian or anything like he doesn't believe in the future in that sense. You see. So he believes in the future of Joe Biden. Genocide, Jim Crow Joe. Right? A man who is against reparations for black people. Him, Obama, all the people they ride with, they're against reparations for the descendant of the slave. Right? Jim Crow Joe, who worked with the KKK. Right? He was a card carrying KKK member. Right? So was Donald Trump. His grandfather was one of the founding members of the KKK in New York City. Right? And so, these are the people that you left to make deals with. Right? And, you know, like in the case of Lyndon B. Johnson, sometimes you get something, sometimes you don't. But with the case of Joe Biden, you won't get anything at all. He's already told you that. And Obama, these people against reparations for the descendants of slaves, right? And they just using you for cannon fodder in their little uh, world war world war drama, right? You're gonna be used as cannon fodder in America. That's it, right? It's unfortunate, but it's 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 prophesied, you see, because you can't figure it out, right? You 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 can't you can't you don't get it, right? You don't understand what the what the immigrants, what the millions of immigrants is about. You don't understand what the feminism and the transsexual agendas and you know. All this shit going on, you can't figure out what it's about, and you can't uh, come together, organize effectively, and then come up with a plan to move asymmetrically to get what you need for your community and your people, right? So it's just every man for himself in the last days of of uh, as Tupac said, the white man's world, right? The white man's world is coming to an end. Right, there will be no making America great again, or Europe, or anywhere. It's fading fast. Right, and who gonna take the brunt of it? The Negro in America. You gonna you gonna be destroyed in America. You gonna be wiped out in America. You hit everything. I mean, America itself is gonna be wiped out. So that's not. America, Israel about to be wiped out. It, it, so it's not. I guess the Negro is minuscule in that in that in that picture, but it's prophetic, right? Because it didn't have to end this way. You see. And so, as we stand on a precipice of uh, World War Three, and there will be World War Three. My, my, we are we already in it, right? There is no getting out of it. Like they said, well, we're gonna do a little bit of strikes. We're gonna do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We don't want to expand the war. The war already expanded. Stupid. They got troops in Yemen. They strike in Yemen. The Gazans turn, get ready, turn is turning that whole situation into Vietnam. They can't get rid of them. They're just killing civilians and retaliation, right? And see, what were they doing? These three soldiers, what were they doing in the Middle East? They were in Syria, right? They said, well, these, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service in Syria. What are you doing in Syria? Were y'all invited? No. So you three Negroes, was part of an invading force in a country where they were invading, trying to destabilize the government of Syria and kill the president and the, and the government in Syria and, uh, and install, you know, some terrorists or something. Like, you know, they're trying to turn 
um, where uh, an experiment started by Barack Obama and continued, right, where they killed over 250,000 Syrians. Let that sink in. And fomented terror groups, right? ISIS spinoffs. Yeah, that's a fact. Thank you for your service. So these three smiling Negroes, right, were in Syria illegally, right? I mean, let's let's just deal. Let's let's roll back the propaganda and let's deal with the reality. Cause see, soon I'm just giving you a dose of reality. Soon you're not gonna be able to hear no 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 propaganda on the news, cause the news channels are gonna be gone. And you're going to be running for your life probably somewhere, right? Only news you might hear is on the radio. Maybe you got an emergency radio broadcast. You see, because everything knocked out. Only thing working is emergency radios. Right? So let me give you the real right now. The real spill, right? On, on You know what I'm Because you need a dose of reality. But the next dose of reality, right, that you get is going to be, like, these, these guys, they went to the other side. Their dose of reality, you know, they have no idea what's going on. They just, in the, they thank you for your service. They're in the military. they thinking about they going home, buy themselves a car with their military checks or something. And then, boom, they gone. Now they're on the other side, getting enlightened by, by the universe. They're like, oh, that's what happened. See, because when you go, when you die, you, you get it all just like that. Now you see, you know, in, in your omnipotence of your spirit, right? It all floods in, you see. So what were they doing in Syria? So these three smiling Negroes, right, were illegally occupying Syrian country, working in an effort to destabilize the government of Syria illegally under international law and steal the oil from Syrians. Thank you for your service. You think the you think the Syrian people thank them for their service? What kind of service is that? Is that honorable? Is it honorable for three Negroes who come from an occupied who are descendants of slaves and genocide and um, slavery and apartheid. Is it honorable to go to somebody's country, occupy their land, genocide their people, 250,000 dead Syrians, steal their oil and land and try to kill their presidents and their government? Is that honorable? I mean, just to be realistic. Let's take away all the propaganda. Cut out all the bullshit. Thank you for your service. Salute. Like, cut all that bullshit out, because you're going to have to cut it out anyway. So you might as well, if you're lucky, you hear my voice, and this might save your life. You see? It might save your life and what's coming soon. Because you start thinking more realistically, and you might think more strategically, Right? And you might wind up doing something to save your life. A light bulb might come on like, yo, I remember this crazy dude said some shit and it's starting to make sense now. I thought he was crazy, but now this shit makes sense. And that might readjust you and then it might save your life. But, so, but this is the Negro in America. You see, they live in honor, they live to, to serve the Nazis. In America, they are a, a destroyed people in America, right? They just uh, uh um, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to words. A spectacle. Maybe I use that word. The Negro in America is a spectacle. You see. And the Lord going to look at you with astonishment right before he destroy you. You see? I'm not that smart. If I can figure it out, you mean you can't? People can't? So, 
So the Negro in America, he 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 at the behest of the Nazi, he decided, well, this is his only, cause he can't, he ain't gonna fight for reparations. So he his only option is to go into the military, because he too weak and silly to do what's right by his own people. So he straps it on, he ends up in Syria, right? Destabilizing the government of another country for some for some Nazis trying to kill their president and steal their oil and fuck their country up. Thank you for your service. And you wonder what's wrong with black people in America. It don't seem that don't I mean nothing I'm saying is a lie, right? So if nothing I'm saying is a lie, what does it mean? When you don't create a future and an option for yourself, other people create it for you. The nigga in America hasn't created an option for himself. So, you know, Joe Biden is his option. So he, he his children end up in Syria doing wickedly and then getting killed with drone strikes. Right? And he on the t she they on the TV crying, looking disgruntled. But you led your children here. You led your children to the strip pole. Your daughters are strippers on their own Instagram and they got their ass and they got their breasts out, right? And they trying to get somebody to DM them, right? So they can sell some, some pussy to them in Dubai or in Nevada or in Miami. You led your daughter there. You led your children to be in Syria, right? Destabilizing the government for, for a check and then get hit with drone strikes. You led your children, right? The independent woman with no, you know, I don't need a man. You led your children wind up being in jail and in prison and being gangsters and thugs in America. You led your children to be little Nas X and to be getting doggy styled by Satan on a music video being a spectacle in front of the whole world. You led them there. You, you, you. You did it. You Negroes did it. You see? Like me, I did it. I'm responsible. I have accountability for what happened to my children. And horrible things have happened to my children. Because I was lying to myself, you see, and I, and I lied to them. I lied to myself about the world around me and the people that I was around me and everything, my family, the, everything I saw, I lied my, I just lied to myself, right? You got your feet on, your hands in the air and your feet on the, on the gas and you just riding through life, motherfucker. It's all a party. And you lie to yourself about the reality that, that surrounds you, right? And your children wind up getting hit with drone strikes or get killed in a drive-by, or your daughter on Instagram with her ass crack in the camera, right, trying to get some dude with some money to break her off a few thousand dollars for breaking her off. You know what I'm saying? So this is what this is what it's come down to. This is what it's come to, right? So the Negro was finished in America. He can't he can't fodder in America, right? He don't got no options, right? Or you want a job with a bunch of immigrants that hate you? They trying to replace you with their cousins and brothers and you know what I mean and stuff like that. They hate your fucking guts. They smiling at you. How you doing? How you doing? You know with the fake shit in their voice. Hey, how are you? Right? Behind your back, the recordings come out. I hate these niggas. Right? Et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? You know the drill. Or maybe you don't. That's why you, you got drone struck and, you know, you're getting drone struck in Syria. Right? Or your children are locked up. Right? Or they cucked out. 
by some immigrants who call you niggers, right? You don't know what happened. Like Kanye West said in the song, niggas stole your dream, you don't know who did it. People stole your dreams, you don't know who did it. I know who did it though. Motherfuckers stole my dreams and that's cool, but I know at least in the end of my life I realized who did it. You see what I'm saying? And I, I'm just and I speak on it, you see. I recognize and realize, you see. That's where enlightenment comes from. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. There's no I don't understand what you get out of it. I don't understand because the end of it is all failure and death and mediocrity, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's all degeneration. What's the point? Like, you know what I mean? I have, you know, family, my mother, people I talk to. And I be like, y'all motherfuckers lying to yourself. What the fuck is the point? What are you getting out of it? Well, you sleep better at night? I don't understand. There's it's, it's no point in that. There's no profit in it. You just end up watching your children on TV smiling at the drone strike with pictures of them. And you sitting in the living room getting interviewed by Channel 13. Talking about, they was a great person. They like to make everybody laugh and they like to have fun. And they had a skateboard and uh, used to listen to music and stuff. That's nice. You don't know what happened. They done stole your child from you and in their life, and you don't know what's going on. You don't know what happened, do you? All you know is, well, Joe Biden called me on the phone and said, thank you for your service. A man who, who eulogized the KKK leadership and who tried to put your asses in concentration camp and put you in the Gaza Strip. Who wanted to put your asses in the Gaza Strip, nigga? The reason why there are ghettos and projects today is because of Joe Biden. It ain't over with. You don't, you don't understand? I mean, I don't want to be late at a point. But in these last days, right, you want to die with some honor. If you're going to die, and you are going to die. Don't get, don't, every, we all die. But you want to die with honor and respect. And die, you know what I'm saying, with, with honor. You want to die being one with the universe. You see, maybe you want to die for something, right? But you don't want to die as a delusion, self-liar. That's hell. Is you going to hell? Well, that's hell. hell. Going to hell is is being a delusional person who lies to their self about everything, about the Bible, about the government, about history, right? About your future. That's hell. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker asked me, are you happy? I'm like, nah, I'm struggling, but I, I'm, I'm happy because I, I ain't living in hell because I don't lie to myself. I have less stress at a certain level because I, I don't lie to myself. It's stressful. Don't get me wrong. It's stressful. Motherfuckers smoke, drink or some shit. You know what I'm saying? And you try to, you know, stay disciplined. It's stressful. Right? But it's more, I think, so if you just keep lying to yourself, the Negro not gonna make it in the mark. They're not gonna, they're not gonna make it out, right? Let's end on, let's end this with the, I'm gonna end this on some. I mean, I could go deeper, you know what I mean? I bet I think I, I, I've gone deep enough, you see? And if you don't get it, then it's just too late. It's too late for most anyway, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? It's too late for most of the Negroes in America. You see? They sold their soul to the devil in America. They sold their soul to Satan, the Antichrist. And there's a price to pay. And the devil is coming to collect soon. He came, see, like with them. The devil came, he said, look, I need that. I'm here to collect. Right? You wanted to 
benefit, you wanted to check, you wanted this and that, that's fine. You can have that, but I'm here to collect on that, on that debt. He said, well, wait a minute. I thought you was coming when I, you know, in 30 years from now when I was like 75 or something or whatever. He's like, yeah, I didn't, that's not in the small print. I didn't say when I was coming. You see? That, look, you didn't read the small print, which said, I may come to collect on that debt any time. Well, you might be in Syria, you know, helping to overthrow the government illegally and get drone struck. You may be in Baltimore doing a drive-by shooting. You may be in Compton, California, right? You may be in Denver, Detroit, Dallas, Texas. I didn't say when I was going to come collect. But I'm here to collect on that debt since you made a deal with the devil. I didn't say how. You may be in Detroit and get hit with a nuclear missile from Russia. You see? You may be in New York City and get hit with nuclear missiles from the Chinese or the Russians or the North Koreans. Right? I didn't say how, you know, exactly when. November 2024. Or November 2025 or something, right? See, the devil, the devil is going to collect on that debt. See, the Negro in America signed on the dotted line. He said, "You know what? Fuck it. You know, I'm tired of fighting. Fuck this civil rights. Fuck reparations. Every man for himself. Right? Fuck the Bible. Fuck prophecy. Fuck laws. You know." I'm going to just be a tranny, I'm going to be in the army, I'm going to be on the police force, I'm going to be on Instagram with my breasts out, I'm just going to do anything I can do, anything but the right thing, righteous things, right, because that's too hard, right, that's the righteous things is too hard, the struggle and the righteous struggle is too hard, I understand, so it's easier to, you know, go in the army and get hit with, and then you get hit with a drone. You say, "Wow, this is this ain't easy as I thought it was gonna be." That's how it's gonna end up with most Negroes in America, right? You say, "I was, I thought I was just gonna be rapping or doing whatever the fuck you're doing, right? Working on this shitty job with these people that don't like me, where I could, get, you know, pay for this shitty ass house and this car." Right? I'm going on vacation. Right? I'm going to Vegas. Look at my pictures on Instagram. You're not going to Vegas anymore. It's almost over with. You're not going to party in the devil's, live, Satan's living room too much longer. That's what they thought. That, that's what they thought. What is that an example to show you? There, there is no future in this particularly because you made it that way right I don't want to be late to the point I don't want to make this too long I, you know but the Negro in America is I mean I don't, I don't want to get this video struck but the Negro in America is a is a it's a shame. A once proud people that gave you jazz and blues and pop, rock and roll, hip hop, right? That gave you poetry and art and inventions, the stoplight, open heart surgery, the gas mask, right? all these different wonderful inventions and they turned into nothing in America. Turned into a bunch of cannon fodder. And you know, and a bunch of degenerates and in the, in the, in the cannon fodder. And a bunch of circus clowns. They came to a fucked up end in America. Cause it is the end, make no mistake. 
This is the end of the rule. Now, whether you see it or not, it's a whole other story, right? I guess you had to, but but just like them, that's the most. The reality of these three is the reality of most niggas in America. You're gonna have to get drone struck before you realize what has happened. I'm gonna end on that, right? You're gonna have to get drone struck, and I don't mean in Syria. You know, I mean like, like, yo, you, know, you know, most Negroes in America, they'll wake up and there'll be like a nuclear bomb that went off, and then maybe like a weekend, a week, if they if they survive <coughs> the initial blast, like a week later, they'll start. Maybe they'll start to like realize like something's gone wrong. You think? They still won't understand, quite understand what. They'll just know that something's gone wrong. Right? Most of their family may be killed by nuclear weapons. And there's nobody, you know, maybe three of them, four of them left. You say, man, I had a big family. Well, not anymore. And they start to think, what happened? What's going on? Something's gone wrong. You think? At what point will you realize something's gone wrong? Like me, I started to realize it like when I grew up on the street and I started watching like my friends all get killed, violently killed, violently killed, right? And, you know, watch my father, you know, it's like ever since the beginning, end up dead, I was 12 years old, suicided, different things, right? You start to realize something's not right here, right? I watched, I watched, you know, this woman one time try to kill my friend right in front of me. She ran over him with a car. And I saw, like, so much growing up, you know, as time went on. And I said, something's not right about all of this. And the back, I couldn't, even though I was caught up, you know what I'm saying? I still I had to realize, like, I realized, like, something's not right. This is, something's gone wrong here. And it's not just me. Environment dictates behavior, so I knew it was more so something going on in the environment. Even though I wasn't smart enough or enlightened enough at the time to see the big picture, the macro as they say. Now I see the macro and the micro. You see? And I'm just talking about some of it to, to you. Out oh, there, YouTube line, right? The question is, when will people see it? Right? When will you start to feel it or see it? You said, what must I do to see it? Right? What must, see in Buddhism, I'm going to say this and I'm going to go. In Buddhism, there's two types of beings, right? There's the awakened ones who are born like a prodigy. And then there are what's called the caused awakened ones. Meaning, like it says, something causes you to awaken. Right? And then you go into enlightenment and Buddhahood. Right? And most of the time, the cause, the waking ones, they face tragedy. They keep facing a lot of tragedy. And what happens is, it wakes them up. You see? That's what's going to happen to most of the people in America. The ones that survive. They, they gonna become caused to waken very soon. If you survive, right? They are going to um, have a tragic experience collectively. You see? Probably in a form of nuclear fire. You see? So, in that process,
prophecy going to come true where it said two thirds two thirds of my people right shall die and be cut off what does that mean in the bible okay if it's 30 million black people 20 million going to die in America soon just like those three all at the same time violently and quickly you see you didn't have to but you made a choice you follow James Clyburn you followed Obama you follow you know whoever Trump you follow everybody you followed everybody but the most high God you see like Pac said who do you believe in I believe in God bless the still breathing even though it's hard that's who I believe in you believed in the wrong thing and it led you to the gates of hell and you went proudly and ignorantly right there was nothing that could cause you to wake up except the fire and so your waking up occurred on the other side it didn't occur on this side it occurs on the other side you see some of us we're waking on this side some of us when you when you when your body gets disintegrated and then you wake your spirit it separates from your avatar and then on the other side you get that download your spirit you download and you say oh this is what this was about yeah you see it all right you, you don't wake up on this side but you will wake up you know and maybe in, in the next life you know there's reincarnation in the next life your next reiteration you'll get it but this one is over with for a lot particularly the Negro in America you had to you know they had to they had to suffer for for the choices that they have made right I, even me, I, I gotta suffer for my bad choices, and I and I make a lot of bad choices. I make bad choices all the time. I'm just human. I make bad choices. Drink, I smoke, hung out with the wrong crowd, got you know did the wrong things, right? I'm just human. Sometimes I learn. Sometimes I don't. Right? Sometimes I change. Sometimes I don't. You see, so. But this is, you know, I saw this story, and you know, it was just like I had said. You know, it, it, I wasn't shocked. It's just the omen of what's to come. You, the Negro will wind up con cannon fodder for the Nazi and the Antichrist. See, they're going to tell you, they're going to say, well, you're fighting for God. You're fighting for, for the, you're, you're, you're fighting for the, the, for good. Do you really believe that? you telling me like these three Negroes thought they was fighting for good. They was doing good. Is that what they really, they believe that? You telling me James Clyburn, Obama, anybody, anybody you want, you, you know, any of these people, cogs in the machine, you telling me that they think that they on the on the side of God? You telling me these three people thought that? That you're doing the work of God in Syria at the behest of these people, the destabilize, you know what I mean? Destabilize the government try to kill the president, steal all, fuck over, you know, millions of people. You think that that's what God wants? That was That's what the Most High, that's what the universe wants? And that you're on the side of people that are doing, this is a good thing? You telling me you that's what you think? 
if you people are telling me that's what you think, you deserve everything you're going to get. If you're saying, listen, I, I, hey, man, I'm doing, this is good. This is all good. This is everything. This is for the good. And you can't tell the difference between the Antichrist and the Most High. You can't tell the difference. You don't know what side you on. You finished. You f you fucking finished. I mean, it's, it's somebody need to tell you. You know, it ain't your father like a father, a good father. I'm gonna say this. I'm really gonna go. It ain't a good father. You're not a good father for lying to your kids. If you ever lie to your kids. You a piece of shit father. And what I mean is like telling your kids everything going to be okay when you know goddamn well it ain't. You know goddamn was it dad? Everything going to be okay, right? No. You're about to die. And I got to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? Like, but, you know, we're going to do the best we can with this situation. That's a good father. <laughs> you know what I mean? A good father is a person to tell you the truth. He not he don't tell you everything you want to hear. A good father say, listen, this is a fucked up situation. And this is what we need to do. This is what we are facing. This is the reality of it. A good father don't tell you, you know, oh yeah, everything's going to be fine. A good, just like a good friend, right? You say he's my friend. Why? Cause he kiss your ass and tell you everything you want to hear. Hey, that guy's not your friend. He's gonna do something fucked up to you. He's not a nice person. He's gonna do something fucked up to you along the way. He's just waiting for an opportunity. <laughs> you know what I mean? A friend tells you shit you don't want to hear. A friend tells you, man, you fucking up, man. Listen, you got to stop the drinking. You got to stop the smoking. You got to stop whatever, right? You got to stop the game banging or whatever. A good, you know, I mean, this is game banging. What they doing, you know, you game banging for this, you know, thank you for your service. You game banging. That's game banging. You see, you gang banging for Nazis. What's the difference? That's all I got. I'm done.